Developer Ryan Mullen just released a Python script that allows you to update all of your RetroTink products on a Mac or Linux, or I guess Windows if you prefer to do it over Python. And that's the first time something like that's available. So let's check out exactly how you do it. There's a few things to note before we begin. First of all, I strongly recommend checking out the other video I did on how to update your RetroTINKS firmware, because how to put each device in update mode is still 100% relevant. You would just use this software instead of the previous one. So all of the stuff involving the RetroTINK hardware itself still applies. Also, this video is going to walk you through how to do it on Mac using Terminal, and there's a few things that I really need you to know about that. First of all, it does involve using the command line, but it's not some crazy thing that you have to memorize. It is super easy, and after you get your computer set up, it is very easy to just follow the instructions and take a moment to do it in the future. As with everything, there is a little bit of setup, but you only have to do that once. And the procedure should be the same if you're using Linux, but if you're using Linux, you already know that, and you'll probably do the whole thing on the command line with no GUI at all. Okay, now let's check out how to use your Mac to update your RetroTINK products using Python and the open source software TINKUP. In order for you to use the TINKUP script, you have to make sure Python is installed, and this is way easier than it looks. All you need to do is open up a terminal window, and you can get to it a bunch of different ways, and then simply copy and paste the script in the order that it was put on the website. So we're gonna go to step one here, copy it into the terminal window and fire it off. And as soon as it started running, it said it was gonna take like 17 hours to download, but it really only took like 10 minutes. So I have it sped up here uh, just to make it easier for you to follow, but basically just click on this, run it, and you might wanna walk away and, and come back in a little bit. The last thing you'll need to do before getting ready to update your firmware is to install the drivers that will be able to tell the computer that the RetroTINK is plugged into it. So just follow the link right from the GitHub. If you're using Mac, make sure to choose one of the drivers that's already signed by Apple, and then install it the same way you would install any program, just by kind of clicking through it. Now, I did need to reboot afterwards, but I was doing a bunch of things on my Mac at the same time, but it's never a bad idea. So after this is completely installed, just reboot your Mac and then you should be all set. All right, so now we're at the point of where you're gonna start every time you need to update the firmware. So all of that stuff we just did, you'll never have to worry about again unless you get a different Mac. But from now on, this is just the same procedure you'll always do. And as with everything, the first time you do it might take a while just to get used to it, but as soon as you do it once, I guarantee this will be a super easy thing in the future that you'll just have to quickly reference the GitHub page. So let's jump in and take a look. Start by going to the TinkUp website and downloading the latest version. Then I like to put it on the desktop. You don't have to, but I just find that it makes running the script easier. If you have another location that you're familiar with typing in the command line, do it there. But if you're just following this guide, after it's downloaded, drop it right onto the desktop. Next, download the firmware that you're looking to flash to your RetroTINK device. It's linked right on the GitHub. There's tons of links on RetroRGB and of course the main RetroTINK blog itself and then download the file. And then there's one thing that I always like to do before I just dump it in the folder. I like to rename the file to be shorter, just so it's easier to type in. You don't have to, but I like to. And then dump that file directly into wherever the TinkUp script folder is. And like I said before, I like to do that right on my desktop. Now's the point that you'll wanna connect your RetroTINK to your computer and put it into update mode. I already went into detail in the previous video on how to do it for each revision of the RetroTINK. I'm not just trying to force you to make a different video, all the info is there and I just don't wanna to have to waste your time and repeat yourself in this one. So make sure your RetroTINK is connected, it is in update mode, and now you can proceed to the final step, which is pretty easy. Just go to the utilities folder and launch your terminal window or launch terminal however you like to. Change the directory to the TinkUp folder, which is pretty easy on a Mac if you're on the desktop, another reason I stuck it there. And then just type the final command on the GitHub page exactly the way you see there. And the only change would be instead of firmware.hex, you manually type in the name of the hex file that you downloaded. 
And that's why I liked to shorten the file before, just because it makes it easier to type. But really, that's it. Open the terminal, change the directory, run the command exactly as you see with just naming the hex file, and wait. And depending on your RetroTINK device, it might take a lot longer than others. The RetroTINK 5Xs take about two minutes to flash sometimes, maybe a little bit quicker. And the earlier revisions, the 2X and the multi-format go a lot quicker, but basically just wait. Now, the first time I tried to run this, I ran into an error, and it was because I downloaded the wrong drivers for it, or maybe it was because I didn't reboot, I'm not really sure. There's also a chance that if you already have Python installed, you need to run the command as Python, not Python 3, but basically if you do what I just showed and something doesn't work or you get some kind of error message, just go back and double check all of the other steps. Was Python properly installed? Was the driver properly installed? And of course, most likely, was the RetroTINK actually in firmware flash mode or did something happen that kick it out? But the good news is that you usually could just try again, reboot or whatever, and it should work without any trouble, but you might run into something like you see here. And that's basically it. So from now on, anytime Mike releases a firmware update, usually featuring some kind of feature or update that he previously said was impossible, all you'll need to do is put it in update mode, connect it to your PC, download the latest revision of the firmware, and run that very quick script. Uh, you could always reference that last point. I have the timestamps in this video and in almost all of my videos as well. And I'll have some written guides on the website. But I think the GitHub does a really good job. And once you're set up to this point, Really just referencing the GitHub and downloading the latest firmware are the only things you need to worry about. Even if you forget to rename the firmware, you'll just have to type more characters, so it's not like you'd make a mistake. And the RetroTINK is usually a pretty robust device that you can't brick. I still always want to be careful, mostly because I'm a paranoid nerd that likes to be careful around my electronics, but it should be fairly safe that if something goes wrong, all you'll have to do is just unplug it, probably reboot the computer just to be safe, and then try again from the beginning. Well, that's it for this time. If you liked this video and you want to see more guides and tutorials like it, please consider signing up for any of the support services linked below. It's your support that keeps all of these videos, the weekly podcast, the website, and everything that I'm involved in going, so if you want to see more of it, please either consider supporting or tell your friends. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.